Okay. Um, I was just picking my my writing pen because um, sometimes the pointer is just too tiny, and I feel that um, it helps. Okay. Now we are looking at degenerate systems, right? Um, to look at the qu exam question you sent to me, I decided to bring an example that is going to help us to understand that better. Um, right. Determine determine whether the system has um, no solution, infinitely many solutions. Um, if it has no solution, explain why. Um, also, um, solve y of t in terms of x of t, where x of t is an arbitrary function of t. Right, how do we start? To start with this, uh, we say in operator, we actually say in operator notation. In operator notation. Right. Um, in operator notation, the system becomes. Right, so we need to write the system in operator notation because sometimes they use the dot, um, the x dot notation, so we can transform that into the operator notation. So in the operator notation, this becomes so uh, precisely um, b plus one into x. And then we have uh, minus into um, d plus one into y. And this is actually equal to e to the e out of t. Right, obviously this one here becomes uh, twice d minus one into x minus uh, twice uh, d minus one into y. Okay into y All right into y and this is equal to 5 e to the minus t okay so we've written this in operator notation right having written it in operator notation it can be transformed into the determinant expression hence we have d plus 1 minus into d plus one two d minus one minus into two d minus one right so we actually obtain the determinant of this and the determinant of these can be seen as d plus one but this goes with that minus into twice d minus one. Then we have a plus d plus one into two d minus one. Right. Minus into, this is two d squared. Right, minus, pick that out, 2d squared, minus d, yeah, minus d, and 2d will give us like a 3d, minus d, and 2d will give us a d, and this would give us a minus 1, and this can multiply straight away, this is actually 2d squared, uh, this is minus d plus 2d, a d minus 1. What is this? This is 2d squared cancels out, the minus d cancels out, the 1 cancels out, giving us a 0. Okay, and this observation we makes us to infer that so that um, the system, so that the system, 
is uh, degenerate. It is degenerate. Well, the system is degenerate. Uh, um, the conclusion of degeneracy arises from the fact that the determinant of the coefficient matrix here uh, becomes zero. Next, we use uh, the notions we know from Kramer's rule. Furthermore. Um, furthermore, since we have the determinant of the, so in view of the notion of Kramer's rule, so we take the first column and we replace uh, the second one by these functions. So we write d plus one to d minus one. Right, we'll write d plus one, we'll write to d minus one. Those functions are e to the p out of two, together with five e to the minus t. Okay, I mean, in this case, because the system obviously is degenerate, um, this becomes equal to even if you take these functions, you put them here. And you have the five e to the minus t. Then you take the second column of that matrix, which is formed by this here, uh, minus into d plus one, minus into d r, so minus into d plus one, minus into two d minus one. Okay, they'll be equal to each other. Let's see what one of them equals. Let's just work this one out. We could work this one out. But in this case, because the system is degenerate, it is expected that they must be equal to each other and equal to zero. Okay, so uh, this with this, it becomes uh, minus uh, twice d, minus one e to the t over two plus uh, d plus one, five e to the minus t, and therefore, if you differentiate this one with respect to t, so it's going to be minus. The, the derivative of this is only the derivative of the top, which is uh, one half with respect to t. But there is a two, then you have e to the t over two, then you have a plus e to the t over two, then you have a minus uh, five e to the minus t. If you differentiate this one with respect to t, you only differentiate the top, uh, which is which is the derivative of the t is minus one. Um, so that's what we get. And then this one by one is uh, exactly the same thing like that. Okay, so but just to uh, remove the brackets here, it gets an e to the t out of two, uh, plus uh, e to the t out of two, minus five e to the minus t, plus five e to the minus t, and the result here is zero. Okay, now the result is zero uh, makes us to infer that um, um, thus the system, the system has infinitely, infinitely, many, infinitely many solutions. Okay. Because this system has uh, infinitely many solutions, so what do we do? We let. We let x. Throw of the first variable, because you have Hello. x and y. Yes, please. Uh, can we go back? OK. Uh, what happened to d here? OK, what happened to that one? All right, obviously, at this point, uh, uh, 2 cancelled 2 in the half. When 2 cancelled 2, then we had uh, minus e to the t over 2 plus the the e to the 
Okay, yeah, because at this point, if you differentiate this one, let's differentiate. Uh, uh, so in other words, uh, we opened the brackets in the following manner. We have twice d minus one e to the t over two. Okay, if you open up the brackets, first you can even allow the minus to go through. And then we have that, okay, in a step-by-step -step fashion. I allowed the minus to go through. Then now we sort of um, let this operator operate on this um, um, exponential um, expression. So we get exactly this one here. And then now what is the derivative of this with respect to t of the e? Okay, in mathematics, the derivative of the e we always differentiate the top with respect to t. So this capital D is, is the derivative with respect to t, and the derivative of the t is 1. So if you differentiate the top, we'll get 1 half. Uh, plus e to the t out of 2. Okay, which is exactly this. Um, the minus half e to the um, t over 2. Then obviously at this point now, if you differentiate uh, this one with respect to t, allowing these to sort of uh, um, come into the brackets, but also the d to operate on the exponential expression, uh, then you have the derivative of the of the top of the minus t, which becomes minus one uh, times the five here, which becomes minus e to the minus t, and then obviously we have the number one multiplied by these, which remains the same. Okay, obviously we differentiated the t over 2 with respect to t because uh, this uh, d, what is the, the this d? This d can be seen as d dt. That's what this capital D is. So if it is a derivative with respect to t, then uh, obviously the two cancels. And we just have the minus e to the t over 2 plus e to the t over 2 minus that. And then these two guys cancel and these five cancel out and we left with the zero. And, and obviously the observation is that now the system has infinitely many solutions. From the notion of Kramer's rule, we get the solutions from this. What does Kramer's rule say and how do we get solutions from Kramer's rule? Okay, I'm gonna recap on Kramer's rule that is done in linear algebra. And how we get solutions from this? Because if ever this happens, then it means that we have infinitely many solutions. But also, the fact that the coefficient matrix has zero determinant, it means that this, the system itself is degenerate. And the degeneracy means that it does not have a unique solution. So if it doesn't have a unique solution, what does it mean? What kinds of solutions can exist? If the solution is, is, is not unique, like they said here, if there's no solution or infinitely many. So if it's degenerates, it means that either it has no solution or it is infinitely many. So that's the degeneracy. Uh, there are two cases, no solution or infinitely many. But here we have infinitely many solutions. Because this is zero. Okay. Now, since this actually is zero and therefore we have infinitely many solutions, then this is what we do if we have uh, infinitely many solutions. We let x be another function g of t where g of t is an arbitrary function. So g of t becomes an arbitrary function. Okay. Um, recall that. We'll recap with the original things uh, that we had this. I'm just gonna write uh, this. We wrote it in operator notation in the beginning. And then we have we had also minus into d plus one. Why? E to the t out of two. And then we have two d minus one. D. 
which means 2d minus 1. Um, we have e to the minus t. Okay, we call this one equation 1. And we call this one equation 2. Right, then from these two equations, 2 times equation 1 minus equation 2. Okay, 2 times equation 1 minus equation 2, what is it going to produce? So that's going to produce... Okay, you can easily see that. 2 times 1 is twice d plus 2 x minus multiplying by 2 is 2d plus 2y 2e to the t over 2 this one times x 2d minus 1y ah okay 5 here Um, 5e to the minus t. Obviously, this one is still equation 2, but this one has been transformed, and we can give it the name 3. Um, so that at this point, uh, if you have uh, equation uh, 3 minus 2, Okay, 2d to uh, minus 2d becomes 0, and then we have um, 2x uh, minus into minus this, which becomes uh, only 3x. And then here, 2d minus 2d becomes 0, and then we have uh, 2. Okay, this is going to be minus 2. This is going to be minus 2. And then this one is going to be plus 1. So minus 2 minus 1, so it's minus 3. minus 3y, which is 2e to the t over 2 minus 5e to the minus t. Right. Um, we remember that x of t is g of t because this uh, has infinitely many solutions. And therefore, the answer is in terms of an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary function where x of t is g. So wherever there is x, we're going to put g minus uh, 3y 2e to the t over 2 minus 5e to the minus t. Okay, so now we make y the subject uh, here. So which means that uh, we can write uh, 3y we can write uh, 3y is equal to, okay, if you move the 3y to the other side, the right-hand side, and then we have 3g of t minus 2e to the t over 2 plus 5e to the minus t. We divide two, okay, the 3 has been moved to the right, and this one has been moved to the left. So we have these uh, signs. All right, and then we can divide through by uh, 3, or multiply both sides by one third, getting g of t uh, minus two thirds. e to the minus t. Okay, so uh, this becomes therefore, because uh, if you remember the question was that if it has no solution, explain why, else y of t in terms of x of t, where x of t is an arbitrary function, which is what we got, we did. Y of t is in terms of x of t, where x of t is an arbitrary function because it's infinitely many solutions. Yeah, okay. So we are done there. Uh, how did you get that? Okay, that's a good question. How did we get this? Okay, Um. here we said that equation three minus equation two, so we said 2d minus 2d, um, 2d minus 2d is 0. And then we have uh, 
two x minus this. So two x minus into minus x. So it's like two x plus x. Two x plus x is three x. And then here we actually um, had this here, two um, d and minus two d. Right. So um, obviously at this point they have the same sign. Okay. So this is minus two d minus two d if you distribute. And uh, minus 2d, if you subtract minus 2d, minus into minus 2d, the, the, the 2d's disappear. And therefore, we have, we're left with now distributing, we have minus 2y, and here we have a y. We have minus 2y, and we have a y. So if you subtract these, then you have minus 2y minus y, which is minus 3y. Okay, and then we just subtract the three minus two. So the D's are completely eliminated by this operation. Why are the D's totally eliminated in this problem? It's because uh, this particular problem has infinitely many solutions. When does a problem in mathematics, a linear system, when does the linear system have infinitely many solutions? It's when one equation is a multiple of the other. And that is the sort of problem here. The situation is that this equa one equation is a multiple of the other. Two is the multiple of is actually a multiple of one, and one is a multiple of two. So um, in, in that event, uh, we have always infinitely many solutions in, in mathematics. Okay, I'm sure that this is a, a very useful one, but uh, I did this because now it is very important for us to do the exam question of the January 2023 you sent to me. Okay, you sent me this question, um, uh, just a couple of minutes ago, and I was looking at the question, and hence it was uh, well supplemented and well complemented by uh, the example I had included. I had included that, I I included that example today earlier, even before you sent the question, because I just decided to look at an example on a system that is that does not have the unique solution. Because in our previous discussion, we looked at the unique solution uh, problem, but now this came in January 2023, and let's look at how. Uh, this question can be solved. It's the same as what we just did now. Determine whether the system is degenerate. So the degeneracy, we just need to compute uh, the determinant of the coefficient matrix. In the degenerate case, decided whether it has, okay, so I read this and it was like, decide whether it has no solution or infinitely many solutions. So if it is degenerate, either no solution exists or the infinitely many solutions that exist. If it has no solution, explain why. Else find the general form of the solutions like we did. We found y in terms of x of t, where x of t was an arbitrary function. We do the same here in the January 2023 uh, question that came. Hence, this one is already in operator notation. So what are we supposed to do? We're just supposed to take the operators, d minus one, d plus two. d minus one, d plus two. Which is equal to, okay? So to find the determinant of this, of the coefficient matrix, we want to decide whether it is degenerate or not. So we actually sort of obtain the determinant like this. Okay, how do we find the determinant and what method do we use to complete the determinant? Uh, we use a method called cofactor expansion. We use cofactor expansion. So now at this point, we have D and D, which is D squared. Plus twice D, minus D, minus two, minus D squared. This and this. So this is minus D, which becomes a plus D with the negative outside. Twice D becomes a minus, a minus twice D with the negative outside, and we have a plus two. So D squared and D squared cancel out. Two D minus two D and D, and everything becomes zero. In the exam question of January 2023, um, so that. So that the system is degenerate. Now, 
because it is degenerate, we need to know whether it has infinitely many solutions or not. Because if it degenerates, it might have no solution. So let's look at the next investigation of this problem. Furthermore, right. Right, furthermore, we, di we do what we did. What did we do? We're going to take the d minus 1, d plus 2, and then replace the second column by this, and vice versa. So d minus 1, d plus 2. OK, this is just Kramer's rule. And then now, the column of the right-hand side expressions, e to the minus 2t, e to the t. Okay, so we expect this one to be actually equal to when you take these right hand sides and we put them here. Now the other column is this one, d minus one, d plus two. Um, d plus two, excuse me. D plus two. So, okay, let's just compute this one. I expect it to be zero. We can compute either this one or that one. Um, so we'll just uh, compute the one we have on the further right. This one, so e to the minus two minus uh, D minus one, e to the T. Okay, allow this to distribute. Minus 2e to the minus 2t plus 2e to the minus 2t minus e to the t plus e to the t. Okay, the derivative of this e it remains the same. Um, now, negative by negative is plus, so that we have e to the t. But obviously, this e to the minus 2t, if you differentiate this one with respect to t, um, we're differentiating only minus 2t because that is the property of the exponential function. The derivative of minus 2t becomes minus 2, which you put uh, before the e. And then 2 times this becomes exactly that. Now, this here becomes 0, and these cancel out, and this is 0. And the, the, the conclusion out of this is uh, does the system, right, does uh, the system has infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. Okay. If it has infinitely many solutions, what do we do? We let. x of t be g of t, where g of t is an arbitrary function okay recall that Okay, I'm bringing forth the questions that came in the exam. Exactly this. I'm going to write this system on the other side so that we can find the answer to the problem. So this becomes d minus 1 according to the question from the January exam paper. d minus 1. And then we have y here. Which is e to the minus 2t t plus 2, x here, uh, d plus 2, y, e to the t. OK, so we have this. Now, to find a solution like we did before, 
In this case, you don't even need to multiply because we're to multiply by two because the, the d's were multiplied by two in one of the equations. But at this point, uh, the coefficients of the operator d in each case is uh, one. So we can call this one equation one and call this one equation two. Um, all right, and then we can say uh, equation one minus equation two minus equation one. Right, so if you say two minus one, one minus two, doesn't matter. Right, so d minus d becomes zero. If we say two minus one, so d minus d is zero and then it becomes two minus this. Two minus this, it's two minus into minus one. So that becomes like a three x. And then now two minus one, d minus d is zero. Two minus into minus that, it becomes three, then y. This minus this, it becomes e to the t minus e to the minus 2t. We want to solve for y, like we did before. So we're going to move the x to the right-hand side, making it to attain a negative in front. Like this. Divide three through by the number three and you get y of t minus x of t plus one over three e to the t minus e to the minus two t. Hello? Yes, please. Uh, why do you say equation two minus equation one instead of equation one minus equation two? Okay, that's fine. That's a good question. Um, I would have said equation one minus equation two is the same thing. Um, yeah, the answer would be the same. But just that the, the two would differ by minus, but can be eliminated. Uh, for instance, let's just say I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to sort of uh, insert it here. If we could say equation, let me write it here. Right, one minus two. What would one minus two become? Okay. So one minus two would become one minus two. So D minus D, zero. Minus X minus two X is gonna be minus three X. D minus D, zero. One minus two, so that's equation one minus equation two. Minus Y minus two I is minus three Y. So e to the minus two t e to the uh, e to the t. What is the difference between these two equations? Okay, they give up by minus. But now, if you multiply this one by negative on the left, okay, it's an optional step. But I want to solve for y. But I want to show the equivalent. You multiply the left by negative and also the right by a negative. So e to the minus two t minus e to the t. What will this one be? So that's going to be like a 3x. Right, so that's going to be clear 3x together with uh, a 3y, which is uh, the same else. Now you multiply out so the negative times the negative becomes a plus minus e to the minus 2t. So obviously at this point, uh, we can see that this equation is exactly equivalent to that one. Okay, so yeah, it is the equivalent. So it doesn't matter which one you always subtract from. Okay, now with this, with that said, we remember that x of t is g of t, so that this one becomes uh, g of t plus one third. e to the t minus e to the minus two t, like this. And therefore, this becomes uh, the solution to the problem. This becomes uh, the solution to the problem. Next question. Okay, there's another question that says we need to perform a reduction. We need to perform a reduction. 
reduce this system to an equivalent triangular system of the form that one. Let's perform the reduction here. See how we perform the reduction. Right. To reduce the system, we did triangular systems, but let's practice with this one. 20 marks out of 100. This paper is normally three hours, so it is it's longer. It has more time than any of the math papers ever written. So yeah, you really can relax a little bit and sit back. But this one is rich in marks. How do we solve this question? All right, and this question is very straightforward. It's something we did before. And uh, now let's just uh, get to do this question here and make sure that we can do it. Um, with ease. We can do it with ease. Right, we're back. Um, you look at it very, very carefully. Right, so now what we can do at this point, this has already been written in operator notation. Okay, now this being written in operator notation means we need to do a couple of things. What do we need to do here to get the answer? We need to determine the solution. <laughs> very long, very long problem. So I'm gonna do it on the next page. Okay, on the next page, what am I gonna write? I'm just gonna write exactly these. D squared plus one, D minus one, the nine, everything. And then we start um, reducing it to a triangular system of the form that. So I'm gonna write D squared plus one, X, then plus four, into D minus one, Y, for E to the T, D minus one, X, plus D plus nine, Y, and this is, is equal to zero. We need to convert to the triangular system. Now to convert it to the triangular system, let's just call this one equation one and let's just call this one equation two. Sometimes you have to just draw a line here. Then to write too many words, like do these, do that, and you can speak in symbols. Right at this point, uh, we can see that we want to eliminate x totally in one of the equations because they're in terms of x and y. We want to eliminate x totally in one of the equations. And to do that, we can just say equation one minus d times equation two. So we can say equation one minus d times equation two. So what is this? Equation one has d squared plus one minus d times equation two. Okay, multiply by d. So you have this. So you have equation one minus D times equation two. So it is exactly four into D minus one minus D times this is D plus nine. Uh-huh. 
then you put a y here. So it's equation one, which is four e to the t minus d into the zero, d of zero. Okay, because if you say d of two, then you must take d both sides of the equation. So that the equation remains stable. What is this? Let's simplify this. So this one is d squared minus d squared, zero. And then we have one plus d. We have one plus d. Which is actually Hello? this one. Yes, please. Why do you choose to multiply it by d? I choose to multiply by d because I want to just remove, uh, we want to remove x. So to, for us to remove x, um, we can just uh, make this d a d squared. First step, we can make this d a d squared. If we make it a d squared, then it's going to remove the higher power of the d. That is, is we want to remove this d squared. That is the objective. So the question becomes how to remove this d squared. So we need to um, focus on the x terms and remove these d squared. How do you remove it? We can only do that by making this one um, a d squared. But it's not the only way. I was looking at the question. Another way to do this would be we can multiply this one by d plus 1. Because the difference of two squares is this. So that would be another way to do the question. Yeah, but yeah, this one is also one of the methods that works. Okay, right. So if we multiply like this, uh, multiply equation two by d so that we can remove the d squared. Indeed, d squared is able to go away because we have d squared minus d squared, which becomes zero. And now um, what do we get? So then we have d squared minus d squared, which is zero. And then we have the d plus one. So this becomes d plus one. into x. And then now we have plus here. Then we have 4d. 4d minus d squared. Minus 9d. Okay, so there's a minus d squared. So what we're getting is we're getting a minus d squared but also there is a 4d minus 9d, which is minus 5d. Right, so you have a minus 4. A minus 4 that's going to come out of that, which is 4e to the t. Which means we have a d plus one x. Okay, so we have a d plus one x, then we have a minus. Okay, then you have the d squared plus five d plus four, which is four e to the t. All right, that's what we get. Okay, this is what we, we have. Right after we got these here, we can still write equation two below this. Equation two is d minus one into x. And then we have d plus nine. Y. And this equals zero. Now, what is the meaning of all these? 
like we do the triangular system to so substitute once we get an equation that's sort of simpler, we substitute into one of the other equations. Normally we substitute uh, into one of them, maybe the first. But at this point, we are not done yet because we just have achieved these. This we have transformed uh, into this, the original uh, system. We have transformed the original system into this. So, okay, that is the first one. It's exactly uh, this, the, the second equation, excuse, yeah. Is this one that was given? Yes. Okay, Um. you are you are asking where the D plus nine is coming from? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, you might be breaking up. I know the network sometimes is not the best. Uh, how okay. did you uh, get the D plus nine? Hello? Yes, how did you get the D plus nine, right? The D plus nine, D and, minus uh, what one happens X, to the... the D plus nine equals zero, right? It is from here. It's given in the question. D minus one into X, D plus nine, so it's, it's equation two. Okay, so we just wrote equation two again. But now we have been able to transform the system into these through this multinus equation sort of approach. Okay, we are still far from because this is still equation the equation two that came from the exam question. But now we need to work more because we still we still do not have x alone. But at least now these x have d's, so we can just subtract the two equations now. So we can call this one equation three, and this is still two. We're going to call this one equation three, and this one is still equation two. Okay, what have we been able to achieve? The problem in the beginning was in the exam question, one, the X terms, we had to remove the X and be left with only Y, but we had a D squared and a D and we had, we had to make them equal to each other. Have we succeeded? Yes. Both the Ds associated with X are now of degree one. But now what we need to do is to remove, we need to actually remove the, the D now. So we're going to say equation three minus equation two. Right, so equation three minus equation two, it's going to be like D minus D is zero. Then this minus that. Okay, X minus into minus X is going to be twice X. And then we have this minus that. Okay, so this minus that is going to be um, you can write this one as it is, like it's d squared plus 5d plus 4. Then minus d minus 9d. This minus that, which is 4e to the t. So this is 2x minus. So this is exactly d squared. Okay. Um, and therefore this one is five d minus d, which is Um, okay, you need to check this here. Let me see. If you subtract these two, 
Okay, subject to these two. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, this is minus, so you are saying three minus two. Yeah, so this one is gonna be um yeah, because this one already is a minus, and then now this one now you're gonna have uh, d plus nine. Okay, so that 5d plus d becomes like a 6d. Becomes like a 6d. 9 and 4 becomes 13. Okay, this normally involves a lot of equations. So there's always a chance of human error because we're saying these minus that. So these two will both have a minus, which you can factor out. And then you factor out the minus, then you're just adding everything here. We're adding this one together with this, okay, for this part. And then now you have this minus that. And then let's write this equation on the next page. As it is, twice x. We have twice x minus, minus into d squared plus 6d plus 13. d squared plus 6d plus 13 into y which equals 4e to the t. Let's make x a subject of the equation. Making x a subject of the equation means x of t is equal to, okay, obviously you move this to the other side and then you divide four by two, 2e to the t. Okay. So that in the end, then you have plus one half d squared plus six d plus 13. Okay. Just like so. Let me see. Let me check. Checking carefully. Uh huh. What is what is this? It is that. Okay, I'm just checking my signs, please. To make sure I'm making no mistake here. Uh huh. So this is fine. This is fine. And then here you have this. So you have this one minus D. And then this one is minus 13. And then this one is plus 60. Plus 60. Plus 60 is correct. Okay, yeah, I'm just uh, assessing, please, just uh, a minute. I need to make sure that I write uh, correct things here because sometimes the mistakes just crop up, so we must avoid them. Okay, this is plus 60 is correct. Okay. Now, this is what we have. So now, substitute. into equation two. What is equation two? It's this one given d minus one into x, d plus nine into x. So d minus one into x plus the d plus nine into y. So, which means that you have d minus one. The x, you substitute, what is the x? 
So the x is 2e to the t plus 1 half d squared plus 6d plus 13. d plus 9, y equals 0. This is equation 2. We substitute it into it. And we get this. The triangular system. The triangular system is therefore is therefore given by Okay, let's see what we are getting here. Now we have Y here and Y there, so we can take out Y. And then if you take out Y, then what do we get? Right. What do we get? Right, so let's uh, analyze this very carefully. We need to write it properly, this equation. And how do we write it properly? The D minus one multiplies out and the Y is a common factor. So if the Y is a common factor, we have uh, this one is gonna come and uh, act on this one, operate on this. So if these comes and operates on that, what do we then get? Here we get 2e to the t. This does not change. So we'd have 2e to the t, and then this one minus that, which is minus 2e to the t. Then you multiply this with that, which is plus 1 half b minus 1 d squared plus 6d plus 13 plus d plus 9 into y equals 0. Okay. So what is this? Hey, okay, now we need to play around with this. Let's just play around a little bit. So two e to the t, two e to the t minus two e to the t is zero. So this one we can just forget about. You can just forget about it. So, okay, two e to the, t, the, the two e to the t like cancels out, and then we shall have. Uh, this here. So we continue to have the following here. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, let's multiply out here, please. Second. Let's multiply out. So if you multiply out, here, what are you going to have here? You're going to have like the one half d times d squared is d cubed, d times 6d is 6d squared, d times 13, 13d, 
then you multiply these. And then plus D, plus nine into Y. Okay. We get exactly these over here. You make things easy because there's this half, that's like a metastipens, you can multiply everything by two here. And if you do that, that's gonna be like a D cubed. You can even add the squares here. Six D squared and that is gonna be a five D squared. The D cubed and then this is gonna be a five D squared. Then this one is gonna be plus. Okay, the 13 minus that is gonna be a seven D and then minus 13. And then now you multiply by two. Like so, okay, and then we continue. So on the next page, you're gonna write this equation. D cubed plus five D squared and then now we're done. Okay, we can even add things up like the seven D plus two D is nine D. Nine D. Okay. Okay, the 9D. Um, and then now you have minus 13 plus 18 plus 5 into Y. Into Y and this is equal to 0. Now this one, now we managed to get it in terms of Y only. X is gone by substitution, by back substitution, if you like. So, hence, the triangular system, is therefore is therefore okay okay so one second is therefore given by Okay, so we write this one first, d cubed plus five d squared. Okay, and then the other one, it's this one here, two x minus this. x minus the d squared, 2x minus the d squared minus into d squared plus 6d plus 13. Why? Equals zero. Ah, because e to the t.
for e to the t. So this is the triangular system of this form. What was the form in the question? What was the form? This one. Right, and this form is the form they gave to us. So, yeah. How different is this form from the actual thing that, that we obtained? Because they said it must be of this form. So how different is it from this one? So, right, it is of the form P1. Y. F1 of T. P2. D. X. P3. D. Y. F2. So you have this. Okay. So now, oh, yeah, I don't I wanted to compare the form that's required. So they wanted this form. So, yeah, so you have only Y. And then you have this. Right, so yeah, just, just a note there. Just a note there. So that is the kind of thing that um, obviously you need to sort of understand. And therefore we have, uh, anyway, we're not done yet. We're still very far. Because we're supposed to solve this question. Because now they said, now we just uh, express it, the triangular system is therefore given by this, but you need to find the answer to this. Because they said, that's why it's 20 marks. Reduce it to the to an equivalent triangular system of the form this and determine the solution. So let's find the solution. Now, what is uh, the solution to this? We're going to find the, the solution to this together, just now, in one second. Right, because once, uh, um, okay, well then we have the auxiliary equation. We now, we now solve for y, using, we now solve for y using the equation d cubed plus 5d squared plus 9d plus 5 y equals 0. Okay, from which you're able to get the auxiliary from the auxiliary equation. From the auxiliary equation. Which is m cubed plus five m squared plus 9m plus 5 equals 0. Okay. Now this one you can factorize into m plus 1 using long division method or anything. Synthetic division, etc. High school methods is a cubic equation. 
if this is equal to zero. Right, so we have m plus one. Right, so from which we are actually able to get m plus one. Continue m plus one. And to just clean this up. From which you're able to get m plus one. M squared. Plus five equals zero. So M equals that, and this one is a quadratic. So we're gonna use uh, minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over 2a minus 4 plus or minus the square root. The b is 4. a is 1. b is 5. Over 2a is 1. which is minus four plus or minus. This is gonna be 16 minus 20. 16 minus 20 is minus four out of two. And this is minus four plus or minus, this is two i out of two and this is minus two plus or minus i. What is the complementary function? So that the complementary function function is given by y complementary function of t t to the minus 2t cosine t B sine T. Okay, this is the complementary function from these uh, answers. We go to E to the minus 2T, then the I here, which is the imaginary part of the complex number, produces um, the 1T, 1T um, arguments like cosine t sine t. Then we need to find the particular integral. Okay, we are just uh, continuing now. Okay, so it is the particular function, this one, but also we have another root, this one. So that is C e to the minus, minus t for the minus one. Okay. Substituting into four.
Hello. Okay. Um, I'm just uh, here now. After I got this, yes. Uh, where did you get this uh, equation from? Yeah, that equation is coming from the fact that we have the we have this one. Because in mathematics, if this is the if the auxiliary equation if the auxiliary equation has the roots m equals a plus i b then from that point what we're getting is the answer becomes e to the a t into A times uh, cosine B T um, plus B the sine of B T. So that sort of becomes the the answer. So obviously this point is minus two plus plus or minus i. Okay, we take only the plus the plus i because the minus i is becomes equivalent. So here it is E. So it, we use this formula, but obviously the real part of the complex number is minus two. So E to the minus two T into um, A cosine T, which means that you have A cosine T plus B sine T. Okay. So, this is the answer. Okay, this is not the only root because m is plus or minus this, but you only take the plus i. That's why it's only one t, one t, just t here, and the minus two real part is minus two t. But you also have m equals minus one. And the m equals minus one now is actually what we have here. Okay, but this, obviously we need to find the general solution. So, but we, this is only the complementary function. The particular integral is next. The particular. Right, the particular integral. Okay, what is the particular integral? Well, the particular integral means we're gonna consider the function we got and integrate. Right, so we're gonna integrate. Let's just uh, do that. So we're gonna consider this one, which is d cubed plus five d squared plus nine d plus five, d cubed plus five d squared. d cubed plus 5d squared d cubed plus 5d squared plus 9d plus 5 plus 9d plus 5 into y equals 0. Okay, so for the particular integral, what you do? You get y and then you divide by this. So it becomes d cubed plus 5d squared plus 9d plus 5. Then you have 0, like this. So that now in the end, this is zero. No matter whatever you get out of these, it's just gonna become zero. So this one is the particular integral. So the particular integral becomes zero. Mm. 
the particular integral becomes the particular integral becomes zero. Okay. So it becomes zero plus a constant. We add a constant e. So you can just say it's e like that. Okay, also you think about this. Uh, You can take it that way, that it is E. It is certainly a constant, just a constant E. But now if you allow Y to be zero, Y to be E, you put it here. So this is gonna make it zero, but this is gonna mean that E itself is equal to zero. So you can just accept that this is zero so that you can accept that the particular integral is zero. Okay, now what is the general solution? The, the complementary function, the particular integral added together will always give us a general solution. Use the more space than required. So that's okay, we're here. So, therefore, I'm going to write in red now. Y general solution of T. Okay, Y general solution is the complementary function plus a particular integral. Okay. Which means that Y general solution, therefore, is E to the minus, okay. First, let me just do this. It is the sum of the two. It is y complementary function plus particular integral, each of which is a function of t. Particular integral obviously becomes zero function of t, so this one is e to the minus 2t a cosine t plus b sine t plus c e to the minus t and this becomes like the general solution okay Okay, take this now, you substitute into the um into the x equation. You substitute into the x equation this one. We actually obtain because this is the solution for y, and then we need to get the solution for, for x as well. So the one for x is this, the equation that is going to give us x because the, the original equation is in terms of x and y. So which means that we have 2x minus into that. 2x minus into d squared. 2x minus into d squared plus 6d. d squared plus 6d plus 13 plus y okay plus y equals 4e to the t okay just yeah because four e to the t. Okay, now you find the derivative. If you find the derivative of 
Okay. X general of T, the general solution now, for X is gonna become, if you take this Y, and you substitute into there, okay? What answer are we gonna get? You're gonna get two E to the um, E, uh, two E to the T plus, e to the minus 2t into two a plus b cosine t plus 2b minus a sine t. plus 4e, okay, 4c, e to the minus t. So you have the solution for general solution for x and for y also. And we're done. We are done. We are done. And that's the answer for x and for y. And then now, because we have done this, we have solved this particular equation. And as we have solved this particular equation, we have obtained the answer. And that becomes the actual answer. And then now we're gonna to move to the next problem. Okay, now I'm actually gonna load the next problem in the next minute. I'm loading the next problem in the next minute. Right. In the next minute, I'm loading the next problem. So now, let's look at the notion of what you call the root vectors. Let's look at the notion of what we call root vectors. And I know that this is a very simple notion, but we need to make sure we sort of understand this and we can be in a position to use these whenever necessary. I'm gonna write down just briefly the actual definition. I know that it is book work and it is something that one knows, one should know because it comes in the exam. So um, it's very important. Let's write the definition. Right. Right, so what we're writing now is actually a definition. Right. Well, they're saying to find the concept of a root vector of order k. A greater equal to one of a matrix A. So this is how we define this. A non-zero vector. We can start by saying the, the non-zero vector. The non-zero vector, okay, I'm writing this because it comes in the exam repeatedly, so right. 
the non zero vector the non zero vector v is said to be to be a root vector of order k k critical to one of the matrix A if a number If a number lambda superscript star exists such that A minus lambda star I K V is equal to zero. A minus lambda star V is not zero. Okay, so in other words, the non-zero vector V is said to be a root vector of order K we're equal to one of the matrix A if a number lambda star exists such that um, this here matrix equation is true such that it's equal to the uh, zero vector. But also if you subtract one from K, the times the vector V is not zero. Okay. And then we get this. And I'm going to mention that if we bear in mind okay, this annihilation, I want to mention the an annihilation part of this. So if we bear in mind If we bear in mind that vector V is said to be annihilated, annihilated, annihilated by A minus lambda star I K hey. if A minus lambda star I K hey. V equals zero. Then we have a nicer version of the definition. Right, then the definition. Then the definition. Can be reformulated. Can be reformulated as
Um, definition. The vector. V is a, a root. So these are just the same. But yeah, it's annihilation. The second part I'm finishing. The vector V is a root vector. So we're going to be using root vectors in the next uh, problem. It's a root vector of order of order k where k is at least one of A if a matrix um or first if a number First, if a number lambda star exists such that vector V is annihilated. is annihilated by a minus lambda star i k but not by A minus lambda star I K minus one. The vector V is the root vector of order K, K equal to one of A. If a number lambda star exists such that V is annihilated by A minus lambda star I all to the power K, but not by a minus lambda um, star A or I to the power K minus one. Okay, note that there. All right, so we have um, we have uh, noted that in this case, we have the definitions that are equivalent for the root vector. So in view of those two definitions, we therefore have defined the concept of a root vector for two marks. Right, and therefore we are pretty much um, done with the definition. And I want us to proceed to look at the, at the next question. Right, just one second, we're moving to the next question. Right, so at this point, uh, we are talking about we are talking about let k be a positive integer. Use the principle of mathematical induction to prove that if a minus that is zero, then u is an eigenvector which corresponds to a non-repeated eigenvalue. Okay, right. So let's look at these and look at how we can prove these with ease. Let's look at these and look at how we can prove this result with ease. I'm sure that it can be proven in many, many ways. You can either prove it now or I can always make time to actually have this proven properly. 
and make time to make sure that this is proven uh, properly. So I'm sure that I'm going to make time to make these um, to make sure that we prove these properly. Let's move to the next question. Right now, there's this notion of the eigenvalue eigenvector method to solve that problem. So now if we use the eigenvector eigenvalue method to solve this problem, right, obviously this solution is going to be pretty long. And uh, it is very interesting for us to look at it. Okay, I've gathered these questions from the que from the um exam paper you sent to me. But it'll be very interesting for us to analyze this and make sure that we are able to solve this problem in the most clearest of ways, in the most clearest of ways. Right. We're going to do exactly that. So obviously, there are a couple of methods that we can use to solve such problems. What are the methods that we can use to solve such problems? Right, we can use fundamental matrices or we can use the eigenvalue, eigenvector problem to solve this kind of a question. And I want us to use the eigenvalue, eigenvector problem to solve this kind of a problem. I'm going to use exactly the eigenvalue, eigenvector problem to solve this kind of a question. And we analyze this properly, thoroughly. We analyze this thoroughly. Because we need to get the actual, the correct answer to this question. Okay. Let's get to it. Okay. Right, using the eigenvalue eigenvector method to solve this problem, we we first find the eigenvalue and then the eigenvector. Okay, let's just keep ourselves busy with it. Right, so we solve the first thing we do is we solve the characteristic equation. Right, we solve the characteristic equation. Right, what is the characteristic equation and how do we achieve it? We call it C of lambda. And C of lambda is going to be the same as what? It's going to be 1, this number 1, minus lambda. You take the number 2, minus lambda. Okay. Also, you remember that I'm sure from linear algebra, we just subtract lambda from the main diagonal entries and the other entries remain the same. In which case, therefore, you have one minus lambda, two minus lambda minus six. Okay, you multiply this, which is one by two, which is exactly two minus three lambda, okay? It's two minus lambda minus two lambda, which is minus three lambda plus lambda squared. I need to make sure I'm getting the correct answers because I've not done this question before. So I need to be very careful that, to be very careful that we get correct answers to this, okay? So two minus six is minus four. Right, so you need to make sure that it really works out to this. Otherwise, then he'll work out, he'll go on with a, a wrong thing. Okay, so that is that. Uh, minus 2 lambda plus lambda squared minus 6, which is lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 4. So, yeah. Yeah, it's correct. 
Okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to be faster. We don't have lots of time. Okay, this might be our last question. Uh, there are thousands of questions I prepared today here. Yeah. Okay, so we have that. But now with this, if this equals zero, so that. Uh, okay, first things first, so let's factorize this. Where you have lambda, lambda. Minus four plus one. Okay, um, and from this, so able to get that lambda, so that lambda is four, or lambda is minus one. Okay. Right. So lambda equals four. Okay, these are the eigen values. We need, so we need to find the eigen vectors. Now to find the eigen vectors, we take uh, this. We substitute into that one. So one minus lambda, one minus four is minus three. Two minus four is minus two. U one, U two. Um. Okay, let's move it to the uh, to the next slide. Minus minus three two, three minus two. Minus three two, three minus two. U one U two equals zero. If I copy correctly, minus three two two minus three. Minus three two two three minus two. Yeah. Minus three two three minus two. Okay. I'm having the right one. My yeah. Okay. So what we get out of this? Um, we write the augmented matrix minus three, two, three minus two, then we do this. So, which means minus one over three, row one. So, but here we can say row two plus row one zeros like this. Um, thus we get u one. U one is equal to. The following from this u1 is equal to u of a 3 u2 u2 is u2 so that u1 u2 what is u1 um it is two thirds u2 and this is u2 we can pull out the fraction normally it's popular with the eigenvectors so that we have a two only here and we have a what a three here so that when you multiply again by these it, three cancels here two yeah so it's fine well we give the vectors names in this module. Uh, hello? Yes, please. What happened here? Here, um, we said uh, we multiplied row one by minus one third row one. So we divided by minus three. If we divide by minus three, divide minus three by minus three to one. 
Divide 2 by minus 3 is minus 2 thirds and divide 0 by minus 3 or multiply by minus 1 third, you get exactly the first row. Second row plus row 1, this second row plus that, so it's 3 minus that 0, this minus that 0, this minus that 0. You get the point. Okay. For lambda equals four, the eigenvector. What is it? Okay, the eigenvector can call it. Normally, we give it the name big U, vector U. Call it vector U one. which is two in three. For the other one, lambda equals minus one. Okay, so we're gonna substitute into the equation. Where is this one? One minus lambda two, One minus lambda two, three, and two minus lambda, three and two minus lambda. So we have three and two minus lambda. So this one, oops, something got pressed. So you have U1, U2. Zero, zero. Okay. Minus one is two, two. Three, three. U1, U2, zero, zero. Okay, for lambda equal to minus one, you just put the minus one there. Okay, so we write the augmented matrix, two, two, three, three. Zero, zero. Row equivalent to, okay, multiply by one half row one, 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 zero. Okay, you can leave this one for now. And then do row two minus three row one. Zero. Zero zero zero. Which means that U one It's minus u2, u2 equals u2. u1, u2. What is u1 according to this? It's minus u2. u2 is u2. u2 is minus 1, 1. Okay. Um, for lambda equals minus one, 
Again, vector. Again, vector is, okay, we give it the name capital. We give it the name capital and then that was U1, so we call this one big U2. Big U2, and big U2 is Um, it's this one. It's minus one, then one. Like that. Okay. Okay, we are here. We are there. So there is a common practice um, that sometimes is used in this module. That when you have this here, you can write this one is, for instance, the first one, you can write it is constant one, two over three, uh, two and three. So here you can write constant one. And here, this one, for the thing you pull out, like here we put out you two. So this one is going to be constant two like this. And the constant two comes from the U2 place and the constant one is like U2 over three. And this method is very popular. Very popular. Okay, let's look at the U1 now in terms of the notation we use of the C1. In linear algebra, we don't normally, we just take the constant to be one. Okay, But now here we have that C1. So let's just maintain that. So that U1 is C1, 2, and 3. U1 is equal to C1 over three. U one is two one two thirds and uh, two over three uh, uh, two and three, and U two is C two. Uh, minus one, one. Like so. Okay, okay, well, we're finishing, please. We're using the eigen like and vector method to solve it. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, from these, so that these are the eigen vectors. So that x1 of t from the u1 becomes c1 2 over 3. e to the, okay, this one obviously corresponds to what? Corresponds to lambda equals 4. And this one corresponds to lambda equals minus one. So that this lamb, this x1 is, is c1 then e to the 40. 
Then you have X2T, which is C2 minus one, one. E to the minus T. Okay. So this one here is a solution. It's a solution. It's a solution of x dot equals ax. Corresponding to lambda equals zero. Is a solution of corresponding to uh, is the first one is corresponding to lambda equals oh. And then the next one is corresponding to, yeah, this one is lambda equals four and this one is lambda equal to minus one. So those are the solutions. Okay, <clears throat> from these uh, part solutions, we have the general solution. The general The solution is therefore given by x of t, which equals t1. We add them up, we add everything up. C1, 2, um, and 3, e to the 4t plus C2 minus one, one E to the minus T. So this is a general solution. From the initial condition, from the initial value, Okay, x0 zero is 0 minus 4. What we get? So, we're going to continue using that one. So, we're going to get x0. Using the eigenvalue eigenvector method, so we have the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues have been obtained already. So uh, this one is zero minus four. Two, three. E to the four times zero. Plus C two minus one, one. Here you have this. You see one minus C two. Okay, so this one is two C one minus C two, and then this one is three C one plus C two. Okay. Now I need to just copy this on the next page. 
So we have zero in minus four. Zero in minus four is equal to, is equal to two C1 minus C2, two C1 minus C2. Two C1 minus C2. Okay, here, I need to write clearly. This one. So this one is like three C1. So we have three C1 plus C plus C2. which means 2C1 minus C2 is zero. These are like spontaneous equations. 3C1 plus C2 is minus four. Can you solve this simultaneously if you take these two equations and you add them up? The result is uh, this one is gonna cancel out giving us 5C1 is equal to minus four. C1 becomes minus five to five, which means C2, according to this, two C1, C2, C1 is minus four out of five, which is minus eight out of five. Okay, we got those two constants. Hence, we have C1 is minus four out of five, and C2 is minus eight out of five, like so. Okay. Now, what is the answer out of this? The solution. Of the initial. Value problem. Is therefore given by. Is therefore given by x, which is x one of t, and x two of t. And what is x one of t? So we got everything, this one in C2. We can substitute everything into this here. If we substitute everything into that one there, C1 and then two and three for e to the t. Okay, let me first remove this. What is C1? Minus four out of five. Okay, obviously we're, we're using this C1 together with the previous, this one, two and three,
E to the fourth P. Plus C2. Plus C2 minus one and one. C2 is minus eight over five, then minus one and one. Then we have e to the minus t. Okay, so we're going to check these answers with the initial value just to make sure that we made no mistakes here. Yeah? Okay, so we just substitute the uh, c1 and the c2. And uh, now this becomes the answer, obviously. That is the answer, but I mean, this answer can be written like this, or also this answer can also be written as you can multiply out. If you multiply out, this one is going to become what? 4 by 2 is minus 8 over 5e e to the 4t minus 12 over 5e e to the 4t plus 8 over 5e e to the minus t minus 8 over 5e e to the minus t. These are the same. So we're done. This is the answer. This is a solution. But I want to check this solution. So we're going to do a quick check. You recall that the initial value is a good way to check the, if this initial value is satisfied. So x0, what is x0? x0 is um, 0 and minus 4. x0 is 0 and minus 4. We have this. Can we try to substitute here? T e equal to zero here. So if you do the x zero, then you're gonna have minus eight out of five. Okay, if t is zero, then this is just one. Plus eight over five. If t is zero, it's e to the minus zero, one. Okay, you come to the bottom, same. Minus 8 over 5. So if you have minus 8 plus 8, it becomes 0. This becomes minus 20 out of 5. What is minus 20 out of 5? It's minus 4. So indeed, we're getting that x0 is that. So this answer is correct. And obviously we have solved this problem. What was the problem? The problem was use eigenvalue, eigenvector method to solve the initial value problem. We found the eigenvalues four and minus four and the eigenvectors were found and we solved the initial value problem. And this is the solution. If you check very carefully, we started at about half six. Right now is 2048. Is PM obviously. So right now is 848 PM. Yeah, so it's fine for today. Um Meaning that I will see you tomorrow. Uh, what time tomorrow? Yeah, the best time for me is like 4.30 because the, the day can be tricky, you know. Um, It's the last day tomorrow, I understand, because yeah. It's the last day tomorrow.